Every day the world is becoming darker and darker. Soon the Son of Man shall appear in glory and power, and the nation shall mourn with the sight of his coming. Are you ready for the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? As the armies of darkness march towards global domination, many slumber as we approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us awake and announce his kingdom. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. You are listening to Radio Redemption. And power! And power! Power! For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Glory be to his name. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're listening to Radio Redemption and Power. We are a South Florida radio program that preaches the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, uh, we're doing a study in, uh, we're going to be looking at the account of David and Goliath. And we know that tonight, this um, this study is going to be a blessing for you. Uh, we're going to be looking at this portion of scripture from different perspectives and looking at even some of the depths of what uh, this story really foreshadows. So we hope that uh, you have your Bible open because we know that this is going to be a study you're definitely going to enjoy. Uh, remember, you can visit us on our webpage, redemptionandpower.com. We have access to all of our podcasts Hit on the podcast link. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes where you can uh, subscribe uh, for automatic downloads. You can also visit us on our Facebook page, as well as download the app that is both available for Android and for iPhones, uh, so you can be able to listen to our program at your convenience. You can also write to us at redemptionandpower at gmail.com, or you can also contact us at 305-320-7727. That's 305-320-7727. Brother Lewis, would you kind of lead us in prayer tonight? Amen. Father God, tonight, Lord, we ask you, the Father, to open up the hearts of the people, Lord. And Father, give us wisdom and understanding to be able to proclaim your gospel today, Father, to proclaim your word. Father, we ask you that uh, you will edify your people, change them, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Once again, you're listening to Radio Redemption and Power. I've seen him in 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to his name. One of the most iconic accounts that we find in the Bible, perhaps one that uh, most of us learned about when we were little in Sunday school, is the battle of David and Goliath. And perhaps battle is not the right word, but rather the defeat of Goliath. And it's no wonder why we learn about the story when we're little as it shows us uh, what happens when a person puts their faith in God, when a person completely trusts in God, even in the face of the obstacles that are before them. Because through God, they can overcome the most impossible odds. And this is something that we see in this story, a young boy going up before this giant in full armor. And there's so much to glean from this story. And just like it was when we did the study of the offering of Isaac a couple of weeks back, um, there's a, a lot of wonderful things uh, in, in this story that also foreshadow our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of lessons that we have to learn from here that we can apply in our everyday living. Because one of the things that the Bible teaches us is that every single one of us are on a journey to the promised land. 
And one of the things that Israel finds in the promised land is giants. And we see when Israel comes to this promised land, and they see these giants of the land, they become intimidated by them. And they don't listen to God with regards to going and taking that land, even if it's riddled with giants. So there is the historical account. There is the prophetic meaning of this account, where that points to our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is the practical account in that me and you have giants that we have to face in our Christian walk that need to be overcome. Giants that hold us back from being able to be victorious in our lives, being able to walk in the promises of God. And and that's one of the aspects that is so wonderful about the Word of God in general and specifically about this account of the story of David and Goliath. So let's start by looking at some important background information of David and slowly building up to the account that's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now David was uh, born in the city of Bethlehem where the precise place where our Lord Jesus Christ uh, was to be born. The name David actually means beloved. So there's, uh, we're going to see that David is a prefigure of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is a type of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament uh, that would speak about the coming Messiah. We see that uh, David was the youngest of all his brothers. He was a shepherd. Uh, of sheep before he was anointed and though he was anointed in secret he later became uh, accepted by the people as king and not only did he uh, grow up to be the greatest king of israel but whom every other king was going to be measured by when you read the book of kings first kings and second kings you see that david is the standard of what a king must live up to and that's the standard that God measures every other king. He measures it up to David because although David was not perfect, one thing that he have is that he loved the Lord and that his desire was to do the will of God. The Bible tells us that he was a man after God's own heart. And he was a man after God's own heart because he knew what God expected of us as humans. He knew that the most important thing that we had as 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 human beings where it was to be faithful to God. And not only did he become the standard of what a king needed to be in the Old Testament, but he is in fact the greatest king that ever lived in the history of uh, of kings even till now. And uh, many, many theologians actually believe that David was actually supposed to be the first king of Israel. But because Israel uh, got ahead of themselves. They wanted to be like all the other nations. They didn't, they didn't wait on God, that God gave them Saul. And the reason why uh, many believe that God um, had uh, had originally set apart David to be the first king was because Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. And we, when we read in the scripture, we find out that the kings of Israel were to be from the tribe of Judah just like the priests were to be from the tribe of Levi. So it's kind of strange regarding Saul, because every other king after that came only from the line of Judah. Uh, so that's very interesting, and, and that's why it's so important for us to uh, practice patience and waiting on God uh, be, before we get ahead of ourselves, because if we um, want something prematurely, uh, we can we can potentially set ourselves back. And so... We look at the scripture here in 1 Samuel 17. David is already anointed. He's been anointed king in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And it was a small ceremony uh, with only his father and his brothers. And nobody else knew. It had to be kept a secret because Saul was a evil man. And he wanted to destroy anybody that stood in his way. Anybody that was a threat to his position. When we as as, as individuals care more about what others think about us um, than we're living for others enough.